The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 311. You get the NASDAQ off 106. S&P's down 36. Gold contract flat, 12.84 an ounce. We get silver down 3 cents, $14.89 an ounce. Light sweet crude off a buck 15, $61.10 a barrel. Notes and bonds, they continue to want higher price, lower yield. Uh, you get the 10 year up 9 ticks, 123.29. 30 year up 19 ticks, 148.13. Now, both of them, folks, went topside yesterday, had volume behind the move, gave it up on price, right back topside again. Volume once again. These things want to break topside. King dollar. King dollar up 132 ticks, trading 97,400. The euro is at 111.85 to 1 US dollar. The yen is at 110.5, and, and the pound is at 130 to 1 US dollar. Didn't take long to uh, come right back downtown. I got a little deja vu, man. Is this Monday or Tuesday? Well, especially if we take a look at this NASDAQ, folks. The NASDAQ is uh, just about, just give it a few more minutes, and uh, you're going to be right at the low of yesterday. Let's go over to my man, Mr. Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, as we do each Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, outstanding program. You want to understand options, option strategies, futures. Great time to do it, folks. You want to find risk because it just depends what is said in between market close and market open as to where this market is going to be going. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. You know, Tommy, you're right. There is some deja vu, but this feels a little different today. This doesn't feel like the panic or the the noise that was in yesterday's report. It feels a little more, I mean, Lighthizer's comments at the end of the day yesterday, Mnuchin's comments at the end of the day yesterday. We've got a, a downgrade in Boeing. We've got Facebook, um, some, a couple of congressmen coming down on Facebook. you got the EU cutting their forecast for Germany again. Today feels a little different, a little heavier than yesterday's trade did. I mean, yesterday's trade, let's face it, Sunday night, trade the lows went in 8 p.m. Sunday night Chicago time so 9 o'clock Florida so that's when the lows went in and the market was kind of getting stronger the rest of the day we'll see what happens today it's there 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 feels like a little different feel to this one yeah and you know what Kevin's saying here folks okay panic is one thing but you can come back from panic in a second when you get a heavier feeling it's a, it's a different it's a different sell it's a different right. yeah no, I, there, I can... there is some uncertainty now the uncertainty surrounding China the fact that this contingent is still coming to the United States on Wednesday and they're going to still negotiate and still things could break back towards the positive but you know you know what really changed I think a lot of this is a nice 3.2 GDP print change this. The U.S. Is, is, you know, clearly winning in terms of the strength in the economy. You saw, we were down less than 1% yesterday. China, as you saw, 5.5% and 7% in their markets. So pretty big moves coming here. And, and, you know, you know this, Tom, this is a high stakes game of poker going on right now. Oh, there's no doubt. You know, I mean, I guess that one of the, the, uh, one of the problems I see flat out is that you know, this S&P, our own S&P, guess what? Those, those companies, whether it's 80 or 90% of that stuff comes from China that they're doing, they're either going to eat that 25% or they're going to raise prices. So yeah. it's serious yeah. business if you're a fundamentalist because guess what? 25% uh, is no uh, small deal, man. You know, so we'll see where it shakes out. Um, I suspect that at some point they're going to eat it for a bit. You know, I, yeah, this week's going to get bumpy, though. I mean, until until we get some word out of these negotiations on how they're breaking. Uh, although, Tom, you and I have been watching the markets for a long time, and Tommy has too. Th I, I didn't think this was going to be a quick, easy uh, negotiation with China. The, the, you know, China plays a very long game with their economic moves, and they have a different agenda than we do, frankly. And 
I was kind of surprised when I heard some of the comments coming that this was moving along and right. going along pretty quickly. I, I was very skeptical about that and still am, frankly. No, there's, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. Hey, uh, you know, what do you think about Boeing here? You know, it, it's really interesting, man. It, it seems that for a company that had so much trust, you know, it's like, wow, they got a great name. And, you know, you, you read, like, that they were laying out here for, like, seven, eight months, and it's like, man, I mean, it hasn't broken its lows, but it's serious right. business, man. they gotta, they got to go back to, you know, public yeah. relations school, uh, some kind of school. Because, ethics. Yeah, ethics oh, would be good. Yeah. That's what you're going for. <laughs> you know, I think Boeing is not as verbal as they probably could be or should be, but I think they're feverishly trying to figure this thing out. And guys, this, this, it's trading 363, just under $364. Right. It's come down here a bunch of times, right? And this is a cut, um, let's see, Barclays cut it from, e from to equal weight from overweight. Cut their price target to guess what? 367. Right. Well, we're trading 363. Right. So, right. It's right in this key level here in the 360s to low 370s. We'll see. You know, if you look on a chart, our chart guys have a field day with Boeing because it's been down in this level. This is a busy price level we're in right now. So, yeah, I think I don't think this is a catastrophic cut. They cut it to equal weight. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. But Boeing's been a nice little trader, for, you know, for sure. If you're trading it, buying dips and then make sure you're exiting on some good rally and strong days. It's been a nice trader. Yeah, no doubt. I think you better be a little careful, Kevin. I've been listening to that program, and this chart, guys, uh, you're, you're starting to come around a little, I think. <laughs> I, hey, listen, I treat the chart as a picture, and I look at the chart for levels. A chart will just never make a decision, a, a trading yeah, decision. I know. I'm only That's where I get off that trade. It's intriguing. Listen, believe me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I love it. I love it. Exactly. You know, hey, we have fun, and, you know, uh, my, I joke with those guys all the time. You know, every ship on the bottom of the ocean has a chart room, I always tell them. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I love to tease them. That's guys. a great <laughs> saying, man. Yeah. Oh, my God. I tease them all the time about it. So we have a lot of fun. It's a good two-way discussion that we have all the time, but hopefully our viewers get both sides and get a clearer picture from us going back and forth. Oh, there's, there's no doubt, man. There's no doubt. And, you yeah. know, as when I bring you on every day, it's the strategies. I, I would say that, I mean, folks, the, the, the strategies are phenomenal, man. I mean, you know, you can... It's just, there's no two ways about it, man. You know, the, whether you're pairing trades, whether you're going into trades, whether you're coming out of trades, the whole, the whole ball of wax, you know. So yeah, the set... In the All we try to do, Tom, is just pound the fundamentals. Right. 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 And that's what we teach. If you watch our show, you'll see the fundamentals, and then you take that fundamental and you add your intellect and and talent and knowledge and see where that takes you. Right. So fundamentally, how much money is Lyft going to lose after the closing bell tonight? Kevin? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll lose money. That's for sure. None of these companies, uh, Tommy, have figured out how to make money yet. You know, they're all big growth stories, but let's face it, the way Lyft and later coming up Uber, the way they're going to make money, they got to cut payouts and they got to raise prices. Yeah. And I frankly, uh, you know, I'm having trouble seeing how they do that without making angry a lot of people. They got to move. We got it up there on the Analyze tab, $5.25. Only a $60 stock. It better be, man. Wow. Right? Yeah. yeah, that's a big move. That's, that's a, a monster. Move. We'll cover it. We're, we're going to trade it. Perfect. Folks, right here, 45 minutes from now. Kevin, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, Thank Kevin. you. Stay right there. Tommy and I are coming right back, folks. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you yeah, scan and, and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market.
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's uh, off uh, 338. You get the NASDAQ down 116. S&P's down uh, 39. So let's go back uh, and take a look at this whole session. So we back this down. I guess, boy, they just waited for the market to close, and uh, I guess they waited an hour, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the um, Lighthouse, or I believe it was, a, it was either a story or a tweet that came out. Yeah. Um, just kind of reiterating that they were going on at 12.01 a.m. Eastern Time. And it could have just been an interview at the end of the day, 5 o'clock, right. um, because they didn't do it between 4 and 5. You could have said, oh, they waited for the market to close. You know, yeah. it's like they'd actually just fell in that hour it with the futures. It looks like right at 6 o'clock. Well, right. it was in between 5 and 6. Yeah, I just got the 10-minute chart up here. That's all I'm saying. Do you know what I mean? The, when the futures dove. It's... Okay. How did you do I think this? it's a gap. No, and I don't right. think they trade between 5 oh, and 6. Open. No, they're open. Right there. Okay. All right, that's uh, 450. Oh, that's, that's 16. Yeah, for 450. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So yeah, that might have been when they opened back up then. I thought it was six. Yeah. So uh, no, that's yeah. I guess maybe they dove in the final 10 minutes though before, because see, it does gap between 450, yeah, 1650, and then you go to six. So it goes from 450 to six o'clock, but it does look like they dove right before five. Look at that, huh? Holy cow. So see, they are closed for that hour. 30, 33 points they went down. Um, and then what you have out here this morning, folks, okay, this is, uh, if we go over these NQs, we take a look at the NQs, this is trying to get into those lows out there. Uh, the low was, uh, yesterday was uh, 76.67. We've made it to 82 thus far. This is an early day, man. <laughs> yes, <laughs> So sure. let, let's go look inside the NDX100 first. So you got Henry Schein up 5.5%. That's a good move. Starbucks up 3 tenths. Ooh, that's scary. Then that's the, only the second one. Look at that. Now, on the, on the, look at Mylan Pharmaceutical. What happened here? So Mylan's down 14%. You got Clack down 5.5%. Regeneron's off 4.5%. Net, Net Ease is, up, is down 4 Let's go to Mylan. Look at this hit. So this thing dropped out of bed. It's earning season. Wow. There you go. 
Look at that, huh? Yeah, so first quarter revenue, they missed by $190 million, which is quite a number when you're only taking in 2.5. Yeah. So they're supposed to take in almost 2.7. They did beat on the earnings somehow right. on that number, 82 versus 79. Um, when you look at the fiscal year, it's quite a range, 380 to 480. Right. The estimate right in the middle. Um, so yeah. fiscal year earnings, again, quite a range. Yeah, I don't know, that's right. the same. Um, you can see, it, it's always intriguing to me that, you know, the market almost never buys that right you know yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. you can't you can't miss on revenue and right. somehow make the earnings right and maybe you can but that's you can't do that forever one uh, yeah, yeah exactly right. as right. in next quarter you better not miss again because you can't just keep making money right as you keep losing right. revenue so you can only cut costs to a certain level take, this might be an abc down it's uh and I assume that that's the last earnings they came out with because it's literally yeah. uh, approaching three months. Maybe it could be a drug test too or something. You know. 32. Well, it's not that big. It looks it looks bigger than it is. It's pretty. Well, look at this though. What a, right. what a mess this is. So this is down from uh, 76 dollars. Holy cow. 76 was 2015. Yeah. yeah. Making your way down to this 17 bucks, man. 17. The top of that is 23. So right now it has. I know. We've got a little support here. We'll, we'll see what you get, though. Sure. That's pretty intense. Definitely. Uh, inside the Dow Industrials, let's take a look at the strength versus the weakness out here. Oh, look at this. Good old McDonald's. Only one stock. Well, it's, it's, and the market's down a percent and a half, right? I mean, yeah. you really got to be doing something extraordinary on your own accord to be positive today. And it's only out of 30. We saw NASDAQ, you had a couple. Um, yeah. yeah. So you get Boeing putting 53 negative points, uh, Home Depot putting 23. Goldman 20, Apple uh, 20. Apple's right back where I was trading yesterday. Um, yeah, so yesterday you came down with 32 million. Oh, it's going to have more than that today. You already got 7.7 .7 million today. Yeah, it could. We'll see, right? It's, a, it's yeah. a fast start when the futures are down a percent and a half. It is. It is. Uh, oil, the, well, the XLE. It broke, yeah, oil's it's, taking it, it broke its swing. Doesn't look like it's going to have the volume though. We did three million. That B point there of an ABC down is 28 million. So, okay. you know, you, you, you broke it. No doubt about that. Now, yeah. the, the oil contract itself. Yeah, down a buck 42. CLM. Okay. And it um it did the same thing in yeah. terms of gapping. Yeah, this is some contract volume too. Yesterday we did 760. You're at 385, so you get some contract volume. I'm just pulling up real quick because it was interesting. So um, there's the drop even, and so this is why I was saying we'll have to figure out. It might have been because look, uh, no, I guess that is. Um, I wanted to get the full whether that was because the oil did the same thing. So see how it's, I wonder, it's 4, 4.55 even, that's a five minute bar, so it must have been right before five o'clock, but just here in the same deal, you don't get any charting between five and six. Yeah. Um, but crude oil, if you figure it, they're actually, um, this is last night, same thing. Right. So you can see that it didn't make it all the way down, but then but the gap between five and six. Uh, Monster. Yeah, it, it opened at 62, and then even um, from about 1 a.m., we'll call it maybe 3 a.m., you trade from 62.41, down to almost almost two dollars. I mean, to sixty dollars. Oh boy, how many sixes are in that number? Sixty six six six. Watch out. Wow. Um, <laughs> and we're just missing one six to have five in a row. Uh, Sixty one oh five. Nonetheless, I mean, pretty pretty remarkable run. And we get uh, API at four thirty tonight, right? And then EIA tomorrow. Yeah. So you get. Uh, let's go look at Walmart because you know. Let's see with the because Walmart, no doubt, is going to be one of the companies look it's not moving though that would be you know 25 percent tafts across the board you know i don't know what the percentages in walmart or home depot all those sure um that is from china um you get home depots getting hit it's down 329 yeah that's breaking let's see it's 4.4 million Lows. But you're right, not more than basically even the market. No, you know, it's as not. in the market's down right. just more than a percent. Right. They're down about a percent and a half. So, right. although lows, that's a bigger number. Yeah. I mean, they're down, excuse me, two and a half percent. 
Well, we'll see where this whole baby's going to shake out. But you can expect this volatility to continue. That's the real bottom line, folks. Um, we'll see where this shakes out. Now, notes and bonds, we're below 2.5 again on the 10-year. Okay. You, you get huge volume today in the 10-year. So this thing wants to break topside. We're already, look at this. We've already done a million contracts. Sure. We've done 1.4 million, but we need that because 1.9 is going after. I think we've done we've done 1 million, right? Yesterday was 1.4, just to get everything. That was 1.4, yeah, right? Yeah, no, that's what I was saying. Right? Okay. You know, that, what, ha what had happened is that we had 1.4 yesterday, 1.9 okay. was going into, but we'll do more than 1.9 today. So this thing wants to break topside. Higher price, lower yield, 2.466. Okay. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down at 267. You get the NASDAQ up 97. S&P's off 31. And uh, so Lyft, Lyft is coming out this afternoon. Yeah, so right now we're trading at $60.80. Is it 72, I believe they went public yes, at? Yes, 72, yeah. Um, so the Analyze tab over here, Thinkorswim platform, $5.15. It's quite a move, but it's a big move. it seems pretty fair, as in would you want to give somebody a call, sell a call for like $3? 
right? I mean, imagine, right. right? I wouldn't yeah. sell somebody a call for $3 yeah. if I own that stock, even if it's covered. I need a little bit more premium um, for either side. Uh, so even if you get into, so let's see, we're gonna, I just wanna see even how much, so what is the date? It's the seventh today. Yeah. You get into May 10th, right? So we have a few days, and this is where you can actually see if you wanna take it all the way to the 10th, Friday, Friday. instead of the one day, right. you gotta move just over $6, whereas the one day move today, $5.16. Um, pretty cool how those play out, and here, what are we at, 60.89, so there's 60.50. Um, Oh, no, I see. I was even doing it. So they are charging. That's not bad. Like $3 because it's on both sides, right? Yeah. I was thinking um, even on one side uh, to get both both sides for $5. Because if you're bullish, $3 doesn't seem that bad no, to know. have exposure until Friday. Right. Um, right. Right. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I was just clicking. And now, you know, I was listening to the one of the analysts, and it's, it's kind of interesting. So they're saying that when Uber filed its IPO, uh, Uber said that they had... 70% of the U.S. market. Okay. And when Lyft filed their IPO, they said they had 39% of okay. the U.S. market. So these analysts are going to be looking for exactly what these numbers are today coming yeah. out. Because and that they was, both can't be right. Sure, right. Yeah. Um, right. And that's what, you know, this article is about just early. And, and so part of just the numbers um, that they're looking for. So they're looking for active riders, and that's going to be a big one. It's going to be revenue, and it's going to be active riders. Right. 19.7 million um, active riders they're looking for, up 40% year over year, and up 1.13 million quarter over quarter. Um, and that's from a number of different things. So let's see, they're estimating revenue per rider to be around $37.80, up from 30 up 34% from a year ago. And that ago. would be revenue per, I wanted a quarter, a year, I wanted that. That's interesting. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, because I'd be a good analyst for that. Not analyst. I'd be, a good, be a good customer. customer. I'd be, yeah, define, I think most yeah. people would be. Um, yeah. That's only one or two, uh, you know, um, I, I, I wonder what that's that. That's why I'm thinking whether it's three months or a right. year. Right, right, I'm way over that for it's either It's probably one the quarter. They're yeah. quarterly numbers. Right. And that would put the average rider somewhere around $160 a right. year for an average that seems right. like much more. Well, you know, it's amazing. If you're in a city, parking costs more than, like, sure. if, if we're downtown, well, we're at downtown, but if, you know, parking's more than the ride cost, you know? I mean, you can't park less anywhere around here. It's 10 bucks, and Uber's 6 to $7. Let's say it's 10 with a tip, 12 sure. with a tip, whatever. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, here's, so just... Different analysts, right? Lift share of the U.S. riding share market, along with its EBITDA margin, will likely be the focus of the first earnings haul. So, based on Uber's financials, we believe Lift share is closer to closer to 30% versus the 39 it gave in its S1 filing. Um, high insurance and operating costs will remain a drag on Lift's EBITDA, which was minus 44% in 2018. Um, and you know what I learned too last weekend? One of one of these uh, drivers is that so the way this insurance deal works, right? Is that the Uber drivers are liable for a thousand dollars per accident? Okay. Um, as the deductible, is that the yeah? Yes, right? yeah. that'd be deductible. So that, that, that's how that works. Uh, and they still pay. I mean, Uber, even Uber and Lyft, they pay. In the, the insurance is one of their biggest costs. Yeah, yeah, and that's one of the things actually they talk about that. Um, Margins of scale offer no help at all, because insurance, you, yeah, yeah, because as you grow, the insurance is just going to grow. It's not one of these, right. you know, you think, all right, a, a bustling tech company losing money, all they got to do is just grow, and they're going to be able to leverage those costs across yeah. the same platform. Insurance for Lyft and Uber, one of the biggest factors um, that just grows right with the company in, in accordance. Yeah, which makes sense, right? No, totally. Yeah, until I can, I guess it, the danger would be self-insuring, you know. And I don't know how, what uh, the ramifications of that are. But, now, know. why why would you say that? I only say it because we're talking about companies worth to the tune of $80 billion. Um, boy. I think it has to do with state by state, how many states you can self-insure in. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, so, that's a, gonna be, that's a big move, man. Whether you're going up $5 or down $5. If yes. You, if I, it goes down $5, watch out. Yeah. Oh, my God. That would be a whole different ball game. Yeah, so I think Uber has somewhere in the neighborhood of 90 million active users, okay. and uh, Lyft coming in closer to about 20 million is how that yeah. market Huge splits difference. up. Yes. Huge difference. Yes. No doubt about that. 877 927 Let's go take a look at the GDX and see if 
I mean, these uh, gold equities, you know, still no action. You know, um, you're up six cents, but you get a sideways move out here. At least you're not getting crushed. The, uh, the GLD is still set up nice. Uh, and so the physical metal is set up better than the, the equities still. You know, bottom line is that that came back, came back into its strength, rejected it, you know, came back, what's that, 62 million shares. We came back with 36 as well as 22. So, and good old King Dollar, you know, that's still trying to get back inside its higher range. It's, it's only about a couple hundred ticks away from it. So, 97,705 is that number. It's interesting. That one says 665. I don't know how that. Oh, no, there's the 705 right there. Okay, so there's the 705. We're at 97,415. And you know, so you know what's amazing? You know what we haven't talked about? Brexit. <laughs> Brexit is gone now, folks, okay? Bre this reminds me of, like, I don't know, I think that was four or five years ago. Like, Greece was going to get down the tubes. It was the, like, for a month, that was the big deal. They didn't have no money, and then all of a sudden, the European Union took care of it, and then everything gets kicked down the, you know. Yeah. You know, yeah. Pretty wild. So let's go take, let's go take a look at the pound anyway. Uh, so the pound right now... They got a new royal over there, Prince yeah, Harry. Yeah. That's why they're sixth, not talking about Brexit. Sixth in line, right? Is that what it is? Yeah, okay, sixth nice. Sixth in line. So. He's got a while to wait. No. Oh. <laughs> look at, look Seems there's a new monarch every 80 years over there, right? No. Yeah, Queen well, Elizabeth. The, the Queen won't give it up to she her. She won't. Son. Good for her, I know. Yeah. So, and she's been the Queen since like 17 or something. Some, since she was 17? Yeah. yeah some right. outrageous thing. Probably, yeah. probably like since yeah. 2000. Uh, yeah. uh, excuse me, 1917. This yeah. is. So, buck thirty we're at. Yeah, this still wants higher price, man. I got to give a plug. What is the the um, series on the Crown on yeah. Netflix? Remember we talked about yeah. it before. If anybody wants a little education on the monarch over there, great series, Bob, based off a true story. Uh, you know, of just her life in the early stages. I'm gonna have to see that. You got to. Yeah. It was actually. Uh, they it was, got a lot of, I believe it's Netflix, so they got a lot of press they did. Um, because. Well, it was amazing, but they spent more than anybody had ever spent, I believe. On really? it was like a hundred and twenty million dollar production okay. over two se two seasons, um, and it was because you're trying to create a monarch. You, you can't do it on the cheap to make it real. Right. The wedding dress they used for her dress, just the dress in the you know as a, as opposed to what it was worth at the time, their dress was like twenty six thousand dollars. So you're talking about one wardrobe for these shows, thirty grand here, here, here. Yeah, but wow. great show. Yeah. Because you just get to learn about her as she comes oh, to, because uh, yeah. her father's brother abdicated the throne, so it right. came out of nowhere that she got in line. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com 
and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Uh, Dow. Dow's down 340. You get the Nasdaq off 129. S&Ps are uh, down 41. And uh, yeah, we got the exact time right now. One of our Tigers gave us the exact time, which is pretty cool. Uh, so you get uh, I'm in Peter from uh, Park City. Uh, 458. Uh, yeah, the 24 yeah, right before that 5 o'clock. Well, we right? brought it up. Yeah. Like, pretty intense, man. I mean, uh, no doubt about it. And what it was is they must have been speaking because you had, uh, let me just zoom in so you can read, and I was just Googling around. So um, you had Mnuchin, I believe, and uh, Robert Lighthizer um, speaking Monday. And so that's, they were probably just having a, whether it was a talk with reporters, a press, press conference, I don't know what it was, but you had both. After they sold the futures, you right? You had both of them. All right, let's, let's stay in reality. <laughs> uh, but, uh, okay, there we go. <laughs> so, so let's let's take a look at the uh, let's see Nasdaq. Let's go look at those NQs again because the NQs almost made it down to the lows yesterday, then bounced. Oh, here we go again. Ah, oh, we just had we just cracked them. I believe we just cracked them, right? I think it was 67. Yeah, it is. And see, we hit 68. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 67.50, and we hit 68.50. Yep. Bye bye though. It's gonna crack them. It's only uh, 443, and let's bring this back. Okay. 1045. What? What are you? Yeah, I mean 43 into the hour. 40, okay, let's bring everybody minutes. along here. So. No. All right. You got. Yeah, this this cell is pretty intense. Let's look at the E minis. That's right next to the low of yesterday. That has, is that 83? Yeah, or no, we're at 90. So it hit 89 thus far, 83 is, is the number. So that'll be the battle lines. Those battle lines are gonna be uh, set up there quick. Yeah, as a couple of the uh, Tigers said, we need a, a fast tweet. Everyone needs a fast that, tweet. <laughs> that everything's, everything's fine now. You know, uh, well, I think that's what what, like Kevin was saying, is is different. Is that it's not fine because you had the Lighthizer and you had Mnuchin, right? Basically saying, I know sometimes nobody listens to the president, maybe for good reason when he just tweets yeah. his tweet storms. But uh, when you got the chief negotiator and the Treasury Secretary saying they're coming Friday at twelve one, because well, the Treasury is the one that puts it on. Right, that's it. Exactly. Here's the tax. Yeah. Here's the tax coming in, baby. Yep. Pretty intense. Yeah. Let's go take a look at some of the uh, higher volume equities and see. Because I think what happens too is they, I believe they might show up Wednesday, but I don't think talks are scheduled to begin until Friday. Oh, um, really? Yeah. So, okay. so there's no cutting that one off. Yeah. Um, oh, Beyond Meat. Man, this is, <laughs> this is. They are beyond happy with their IPO. Look at this thing. So you're up another $5. You're trading 79.77. It's pretty amazing. 
Uh, yeah, what did they go? Um, 26, 25 was it? Dollars, 25 dollars, 25 or 26, 25. And they opened the following day, though, at like a huge number. Yeah, yeah they first started so. trading at 46, I believe. Yeah. So 25 on the dot, easy to remember. And, um, yeah, more than 200% at this point. Hey, can you can you imagine? You know, I, you brought this up yesterday to me. The, you know, you, you do an IPO and you leave that much money on the table. That's yeah. pretty intense. I said, you know, if we're TFNN, right, yep. and you're going public and TFNN's worth whatever, ten million dollars. Right. All right, right, we'll sell twenty percent of it for two million. Yeah. Well, three days later, you could have gotten six plus million right. for that same twenty percent of the know. company, um, and obviously much bigger numbers that they're talking about. What is the uh, what is their market cap right now? Five billion, um, and it's up more than two percent. So they only pegged that company worth about one point five billion. Yeah. Coming. I mean, you, you know, you're meeting with all the underwriters, right? And they're saying, listen, I think we go for a market cap of one point five billion. I think we can get it out at that, and in the span of four days. The market says you guys should have went for five billion. You're worth a lot more, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. And they, uh, you know, right now they expect to take in what 87 million this year. We'll just call it nothing. Then now that yeah. was last year too. I don't know what that. So that's oh, yeah. I think that that's right. what they stated. Um, but obviously, all about all about the future for them. Yeah. yeah. And it looks like uh, you know Tyson's going to be in it. It's going to be all about the future. That uh, yeah, they're going to they're going to try with their own, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Let's go take a look at the uh, TLT. So you get the bonds on the move. TLT, you're at 124.56. That's over the last swing high. Gonna need some more volume, but it's going for the highs. That high out there is uh, 126. Put this. Be interesting, man, when it gets up here. Because you get, look at, I mean, this, we've been trading with that range. Yep. November of 2016. What happened November of 16? The election. That's oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. 131 to 121. I'm always looking for when I yeah. see a chart like that. Okay. That's not a charting move. That's, yeah. that's a fundamental. Right. What right. was going on in the world that just had that right. um, bonds drop right. through the, well, uh, pretty remarkable, though, that we're, we're been kind of been hanging, right? Um, yeah. And we are. That's quite a bar, man. Can we pull up the 10-year yield? Or we just start yeah. typing 10-year. Oh yeah. yeah, I think you did. Oh, okay. Yeah, Is that what no, uh, just no. Literally, uh, ten. That's a. It might be ten years too. I just, uh, I just know that that's. Uh... Look at that, right? Yep. Pretty remarkable. And I'm gonna back it up the same way. What'd you put on three year, right? And there is uh, so yeah. pretty remarkable though that we were into that bar on the price, but in the yield we're not into um, what we were doing back then. Right. Pretty interesting. How does yeah. that work? Right? Well, I think what happens is that it, it, this is deceiving sometimes, and you you, you got to put the crosshairs on it to see where it is, because it blows my mind that. So we're at. Oh, you know what? I'm on a weekly. Were you on a monthly? No. I'm not sure. Okay. Either way. Maybe I was. Either way, we're close. Yeah. So you can see, you know, way up here we were at. Let's see. Look at that, 3.25, and then. 2.3. Yeah. Yeah. That's, we're heading for the 2.3 again, man. And, and then, then, look at that, right? Yeah. 1.3. 1.3. That was April of 2016, is that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see, if, June of let's see what uh, 30 here. And look at that. 2.8 on a 30 year. That's impressive. I agree. You yeah, give we'll the same money. Thing. For 30 years, and you're only going to make 2.8 percent. And that is 2.08 all the way down wow. there for 30 years. And that looks like it's going to the bottom of the range too. And now, yes, see, that right. one is underneath it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're saying longer term. That that's why this whole deal about the the longer range is saying okay. There's many analysts that think that the rates have peaked. Yes. You know that uh, we, we're going and. The market is saying that too. This this market is definitely saying this. I mean, we're we're right into that bar already. So yeah. that puts game down at two point six. Pretty incredible. Man. Yeah. But it's not incredible as we say once you look around the world rates. Sure. Right. You know, our rates are still dramatically pretty high. Um, 
Market almost at lowest here, right? Yeah, pressure. There's pressure out here. You get the Dow down 357. Nasdaq is off 136. Nasdaq, I mean, S&Ps are off 42. I think we got there on that Nasdaq to that number, too. We'll check it out when we come back. Okay, stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002 when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 366. Nasdaq's off 143. S&P's down 43. You want to go to the Nasdaq? Yeah, it blew it apart. We were just there. NQ, M, 9. Um, yeah. Oops, nope. Nine. 9, there we go. I'll get there. GPO. Uh, it was... So the low yesterday was 76.67.50. We're now... Uh, that was a quick little drop to 76.53, and you yeah. can just see visually we're below that level. Man, these are some big bars going on here. <laughs> um, even if you're not zoomed in, I mean, we're talking about, yeah. what is the span here? The span here is from 77.34 to 78.32. That's about 140 points. The span on this bar, 76.67 to 78.17. That's 150 points, and uh, same thing, about 150 points. 2%, 2%, 2%. Real action. Um, with that in mind, what are we at in the VIX? Because if we're doing 2% every single day, man, the VIX should be far above even 19. Um, 
put it on a little bit closer time frame. There was your acceleration coming into the Sunday night deal, and then we got all the way back down almost 15 yesterday, but boom, right back up there, 1954. And you know, if you, if you, if you if we look at that, you're going to see that even when the market made it all the way back, the VIX was still staying pretty high yesterday. Wait, sorry, look at what? Coming into the close. The VIX uh, was still staying high. It was at 15. That's how I just yeah, looked at it. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's still high. I mean, here, uh, yeah. let me put it on this one. So to to can, be, so what so Kevin always tells us, long-term average is like 16 or something. I'm just, you know, to be under 16. Um, you know, we, we made it to 18. It closed at 15, 50, 55. So yeah. they're, they're still charging premium. Yeah. And guess what? I think it should have been higher. That's that's my only hesitation well, there. As in, it, it might have been high, but 15 is not high when you're up 2%, down 2% in the middle of the day. And you got tariffs coming, and as we saw, it didn't take long. It took one hour after the close. <laughs> Stay right there, folks. We got a fast market coming up next, and we got our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, man. Wow! Go get him, folks.